Hello, my name is Håkon and welcome back to my channel where I'm going to talk a little bit about something different today and that is to do with music tech, production technology and um, some things that I've done differently in my recent uh, synthesizer music videos that I want to talk about and show you how to do it if you are interested in doing something similar of course. There are three things that I've done lately that I haven't been doing before and the most visible is that I've had in shot while I've been playing uh, both for my own sake and for the video I've had a live oscilloscope view or a vector scope rather um, which lets me visualize the sound while I'm playing it uh, that's one thing uh, secondly and this is actually quite important to me although you won't be able to see it or hear it is that I've recorded both the raw sound coming out from my synth as well as the processed sound. Now the reason I've not usually done this in the past is it's a little bit convoluted to do it sometimes. Um, I know a few ways of doing it, I'm going to talk about those in this video, um, but the thing is I want to be able to listen to the sound with effects when I'm playing and at the same time I want to have a recording of the raw sound so that I can use it in other contexts, I can edit it, I can change things because you can't really do that once the effects are on it. So I've been wanting to record both with and without effects and now I've figured out a good way of doing it that works really well for me. Now this has a side effect because I'm showing you this today. You will notice that the sound quality of my voice now is not as good as usual and that is because I'm recording uh, my sound through my webcam today instead of using my Sony PCM-D100 recorder which is what I usually do because when I'm doing my uh, dual recording of my synth, I am also using that to record the sound. So I've got two recorders that is going to be part of the audio chain to record the sound. One will record the raw sound and one will record the processed sound. And the way I'm achieving all this is um, of course I need, uh, in order to do this, um, you don't necessarily need um, several a mixer with several outputs like I'm using but it is easier if you have a mixer with several outputs. It is possible to daisy chain uh, recorders so that for instance I'm just going to explain that uh, very briefly now. So you take the output from your synth into your first recorder which is the one recording the raw sound. Uh, you still need two recorders of course uh, unless you have one that can allow you to route things back in a way that works. So you have synth out into first recorder raw sound and then you can take the output from the uh, first recorder whether it's the monitor output or, or a line output or a headphones output and then you insert that into your effects and then you take the output from the effects into your second recorder and then you uh, monitor your signal from the headphone output of the second recorder and so you can hear it with effects as well as record it with and without effects. That is possible to do but it is more convenient when you have a mixer like the Soundcraft EPM6 which I'm going to show you today. Uh, so I'm just going to change the view now to my desk and give you a little overview of how I do things. So here we are on my desk, got my phenol synth here and the output of the phenol synth is uh, plugged into the first two line inputs on my Soundcraft mixer. Mixer. Um, so I could have had more synths connected for this but just to demonstrate I'm just using one single synth today. Um, and then of course on the Soundcraft mixer we have a dedicated record output here uh, and that's my main, that will output the main mix. Um, I'm going to, I'm sending that to my Zoom H4n recorder. It isn't the best of these two recorders. So you would think maybe I should have the best recorder for my um, raw sound, but it actually works really well on synth. This is the one I have been using. 
um, it has noisy preamps, but because of the, when you have a line level input, the preamps are pretty much not engaged at all. In fact, I'm attenuating the signal rather than amplifying it when I'm using line level, um, which is a quirk of the H4N, which makes it not so great for some things, but perfect for line level recording, actually, I think. Um, and, and that's it. I'm not connecting anything else to the headphone output or output from the H4N because I'm using the mixer and it has multiple outputs. Um, and then I'm sending a copy of the main mix through the monitor output um, up here. Uh, I could use the main outputs with the XLR uh, jacks, but I don't actually use the XLR jacks uh, for outputs now. Uh, I'm just using the monitor ones. And that is then sent to the Zoya inputs, audio left and right, uh, which means that now the input to the Zoya is the raw sound from the mixer, left and right, and then it can be processed through the Zoya. Output from the Zoya, left and right, goes to the line input of my Sony D100 here. Um, and then uh, that's with effects, and that will record that. And then I am uh, connecting also my headphones to the Sony PCMD100 so that I can monitor the uh, music with effects. Uh, and this allows me also to modify the effects while playing, which gives me a completely different control over the sound, which sometimes I use creatively, of course, I used to often play the effects as well. Not lately, I haven't done that much, but I will, I will do that uh, from time to time. And it's nice to have the option of then being able to monitor it and not just listen to the uh, raw signal. So uh, it is also possible on the um, EPM6 now to take the headphone output from the last chain here, last in the chain, and connect it back into the two track input of the mixer. And then you can monitor it, of course, from from here, from the from the mixer itself. I haven't done that this time because, well, I didn't need to, um, but I could connect the uh, recorder back into the mixer as well and use, connect my headphones to the mixer. So that is possible, in which case I would be able to monitor both the, um, the raw sound as well as the processed sound. So that's quite useful as well. Um, so that is the starting point. Um, and now for the um, important thing as well is the oscilloscope effect. So I'm going to just uh, change my screen view here. Let's see like this, or the vector scope, I should say. So I'm, I'm using Reaper, uh, which doesn't really matter. But of course, the idea is that I am then sending two more audio uh, signals, left and right, to my door through my audio interface. I uh, have an Audient ID4, which has, uh, technically you think, people think of it as a single input, but it, it has a direct input uh, for instruments and, um, and it has a line or mic input for microphones. And if you adjust the uh, levels of these two inputs, because they have different, um, different resistance, um, that's not the word I'm looking for. You know what word I'm looking for. Impedance is the word I'm looking for. So they have different impedance uh, and then you can actually get the same levels for left and right and then you can use that as a uh, starting point. I don't have it in shot now and if I touch it, sometimes the USB cable uh, jumps out and it loses connection. So I'm not going to do that right now, but it is just outside of shot and you'll just have to take my word for it. Um, and then I've set my track in, in Reaper to uh, monitor as well as to receive from the audio channels one and two from my uh, audio interface. And then that's connected to the VST, which is the uh, Torborg signalizer, um, which is set to the vector scope effect. And then I've got on my desktop the Splash Top uh, X Display app running, and I've got it running on my iPad, and I've connected them, and they are ready to go. So I've got the app right, right here. Um, 
because now there's nothing showing because there is no sound. Um, so let's just see if I can make some sound here for it to show so I can demonstrate how I've actually connected these things up. So I'm going to do a triangle wave in here and a triangle wave in here, left and right. Now I'm going to just have to mute my computer now. Uh, let's see. And uh, also I should just start my recordings. Before I do this, okay. So now I've got both both recorders started, and now I can increase the volume, and we can see the vector scope here. Um, and of course, now this is showing the phase difference between the two signals, left and right. Um, I can actually make it less of a phase difference by mixing them together like that as well. Uh... So now, one of the uh, interesting ways now that I've done this is I've connected the um, the input to the computer and therefore to the vector scope is connected in the auxiliary outputs of my mixer and this is actually something that works really well and I think that's a slight lateral thinking that makes it so much easier for me to adjust and also uh, because if I've got more synthesizers connected to my mixer now I would probably wouldn't want all of them necessarily to be part of the vector scope I want to analyze just a small part of the audio so by connecting that to the auxiliary outputs uh, what that allows me to do is to control exactly which signal is sent to the oscilloscope with the auxiliary buttons here. So if I've got several sources, I can adjust which one is um, sent and by how much as well. So I can adjust very precisely now how much I want. I can actually just sort of crank it up there. Now another nice thing about the oscilloscope um, here is I can one can actually zoom in on it like this using the mouse wheel and then I can adjust it so that it's a little bit more a convenient kind of size. Now of course the face, okay that's the like that. That's gonna increase that a little bit. Um, and of course, interesting things happen when you when you start doing doing stuff like this. That's now I'm just using the synchronized input here of the. So this creates interesting waveforms. Now, of course, uh, the oscilloscope isn't just. Um, it's going to. Uh, not just an XY one. Of course, you also have a normal oscilloscope as well, uh, which can be useful sometimes. Uh, analyze the waveforms you get so that's also something that is useful uh, I do have other apps that I think are better for this particular kind of purpose but it's um, it's something else you can do so back now to the, let's see, to the regular XY scope because that is of course the one that I prefer using. So let's, do, let's just do, mix things up a little bit here. So if I do like this, like that. There. So right now I'm not monitoring the sounds, I have no idea what this sounds like, but um, it might be absolutely horrible to listen to for all I know, but uh, yeah, that's that's the principle of it. That's, so I've got um, recording now uh, the raw sound. I'm recording the, oh, hang on, I forgot about the effects. The effects are on actually, so I've got the raw sound, uh, of course, recorded all the time. Um, and, and of course, that's another thing about vector scopes, by the way. Uh, the thing is, if you put a sound with effects on a vector scope, it doesn't actually look particularly nice. 
uh, it gets very mushy and fuzzy and so you can't actually use it to analyze or, or it doesn't isn't isn't very decorative either so you really want an unprocessed sound to be on on a vector scope so I'm just curious what this sounds like now. Okay. So we'll synchronize. Yeah, etc. So that's the that's the principle of it. So you use so if you have a mixer that has multiple outputs, you only technically need um, for this to work really well. You don't need as many as you get on the Soundcraft. But the Soundcraft is really good in that it has two auxiliary outputs, and it has really when you think about it, uh, one, two, three, four, four main outputs plus the headphones actually. So that's five. Um, and in addition to that, you could also technically use the uh, insert points, but then you need to wire some special cables uh, as well to do that because you need a signal to go back uh, both out to something and then back into the uh, insert as well uh, without changing it. So um, that's what I wanted to show you today. And uh, I hope you found that interesting and useful. If you have any questions about this, uh, please leave them in the comments. I do expect there will be some questions, but it is very easy uh, once you wrap your head around, use the basic use of a mixer to do interesting things with it and root things in interesting ways that allows you to do things like recording with and without effects, for instance, and to have even have uh, left uh, some outputs that you can use for an oscilloscope. So that's what I wanted to show you today. So um, thank you for watching and goodbye for now. Bye bye.